Well, we want to welcome everybody again to Holy Cross live stream worship. We're glad that you tuned in. And so now, uh, in the, as the saga continues, as some 53,000 uh, Americans are now dead as a result of the COVID uh, uh, crisis that we're in, 22,000 in New York State, 1,600 in the state of California, and a little more than 600 in our own state of Texas. Interestingly, studies are now showing that uh, um, there are many more Americans who have uh, contracted the COVID uh, virus and have recovered from it than was uh, previously understood. And now while uh, deaths and, and hospitalizations are uh, beginning to flatten out in some places, although not quite so, uh, in other places we are as a nation beginning to talk about uh, getting our economy back. And uh, indeed, with 26 million Americans now out of work as a result of the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis and the, stay at, the national stay-at-home order, uh, not a few Americans, uh, American business owners and American uh, workers are clamoring for the right to go back to work. And uh, so as much as we understand that, we're continuing to pray uh, for a wise and successful transition. Amen. Well, let's pray as we begin our worship today. And Lord, uh, we, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you uh, even in the midst of this crisis and uh, all of this social distancing in which we're engaging uh, and for good reason. And uh, so we do pray, Lord, that uh, you would help us as we make a transition back to life uh, in the sense of normalcy uh, like it was before uh, we uh, entered into this uh, this uh, stay-at-home order and and the the COVID-19 pandemic, and uh, maybe taking away some lessons that we that uh, we be, we be good to learn and continue to practice, uh, just to stay healthier. And uh, but anyway, as we come to this hour and as we consider the scriptures, as we pray and as we praise you in song, Lord, uh, may uh, your promise be true in each one of our hearts. Uh, in as much as you said, wherever two or three are gathered together in your name, uh, you're with them in the midst. And that's just the case in many households all around this area. Uh, we're meeting in groups of two and three and four and five and so forth. And so bless us, Lord, as we do. Speak to our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Earth has no sorrow 
and heaven can't cure. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame, and all who are broken, lift up your face. There's a joy for the morning. Oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about three thousand souls. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That portion of the Psalter appointed for this morning is from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. And then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he's done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord 
in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from First Peter. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout your time of exile. Knowing that you are ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. Who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, two of his disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem, and you do not know the things that have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some of our women, the women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb, tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And so they drew near to the village to which they were going, and Jesus acted as if he were, he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it's toward evening, and the day is now far spent. And so Jesus went to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread, and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight and they said to each other did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road and while he opened to us the scriptures and they rose that same hour and returned to jerusalem and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And then those two disciples told what had happened to them on the road and how Jesus was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of the Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, we pray that we would hear not just the words of men, but the words of God. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take that as my text this morning from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. If you have your Bible, and I hope that you do, I want to invite you to turn to the 24th chapter of Luke. 
And beginning at verse 13, indeed, uh, verse uh, 13 and several verses after that. And this morning I want to talk about knowing Christ, or in particular, knowing the living Christ. Indeed, I wonder, do, do you know Christ? Do you know the living Christ? And, and I don't just mean know about Christ because perhaps uh, you go to Christmas and Easter or because you go to Sunday service uh, whenever you don't have something more interesting or something more pressing to do. I mean, do you know Christ like you know other people? Uh, closely, intimately, and personally. And some of you might say, yes, I do know Christ in that way. And others of you very honestly might say, you know, I, I don't know Christ in that way. And still others of you might say, you know, I'm not exactly sure. I don't know exactly if I know what it is that you're talking about. Well, part of what it means to know Christ intimately and personally involves knowing where to find him and knowing where it is that he's revealing himself. Now, truth be told, Christ reveals himself uh, to us in many ways and many places. But in our text, there's two places in particular, two places that are highlighted. And the first is the scripture. And the second is the breaking of bread that Jesus makes himself known or reveals himself to us in the scripture and the breaking of bread. And so these are the two things that I want us to think about this morning while we're thinking together about what it means to know the living, risen Christ Jesus. And the first thing is that Christ makes himself known to us in the scriptures. In fact, uh, Luke tells us in our text that on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, there were two people or two disciples that had been following Jesus. And uh, these two people were apparently close to close associates with other disciples and the and acquainted with the apostles uh, in particular. And they had been in Jerusalem uh, just a couple days before, a few days before when Jesus was crucified. And now that the Sabbath was over and now it's the first day of the week, uh, they're making their way home on foot uh, to, a, to a village where we, we don't know where it is anymore, a village called Emmaus, which Luke was aware of uh, and which he says was located some uh, seven miles from Jerusalem. And so probably about uh, if people on average walk about three miles an hour, about a two and a half uh, mile journey from Jerusalem to wherever their home was in this village of Emmaus. And Luke tells us that as they were walking together, they were talking with, 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 talking with each other about all the things that had happened to Jesus in Jerusalem a few days earlier. They were talking about his arrest uh, and his trial and his suffering and uh, his death by means of a Roman crucifixion. And Luke tells us that while they were walking together and talking together, that Jesus, now risen, the risen Christ, drew near and began uh, walking with them. I can imagine him just sort of coming up perhaps behind him. Maybe they came to a crossroads and he was walking uh, on that crossroads and then joined them on the road where they were. And I, I'm, I'm not imagining that the, that the road was just them, just the three of them. But if there's many Jews who were uh, uh, in Jerusalem, had traveled from other places, coming to Jerusalem for the uh, great high feast of Passover, uh, there would have been lots of Jews uh, making their way back home. And so it might have been rather crowded uh, rather than uh, empty roads. But Jesus uh, drew near and he began walking with them. And, uh, and then Luke says a curious thing, uh, that, uh, that their eyes were kept or held from recognizing him, which, uh, which I don't necessarily understand, but the suggestion is some sort of a divine intervention to keep them from understanding and seeing who it was actually who they were talking to. And they expected that he was dead anyway. And then Luke says that as Jesus came up alongside them, that he, he asked them what they were talking about, as if he didn't know what they were talking about. And Luke says that when, when Jesus asked them this, they, they stopped walking. In fact, they just stopped dead in their tracks and 
Luke says, and, and their faces were long and expressive of, of sadness. Indeed, they were stricken with grief because of what had happened. And Luke says that one of them, uh, one called Cleopas, in fact, it may very well have been a husband and wife, um, but one of them called Cleopas, he answered Jesus. Indeed, notice of, uh, verse 18. It says, and then one of them named Cleopas answered, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem, the only visitor to Jerusalem for the Passover feast to, who does not know the things that have happened in these days? And then Luke says that Jesus asked them, what things? And then they said to Jesus, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word uh, before God and the people, loved and adored by God and, and the people, but not everybody adored him. They, he, Cleopas went on to, to say, and, and how our religious leaders, our religious leaders, they should have known our religious leaders delivered him up to the Romans and, and condemned him to death by crucifixion. But we had hoped in our heart that, that, that this Jesus of Nazareth would be the one who would redeem Israel, that is, uh, to, to, to deliver Israel, their country, their people, from Roman domination and reestablish uh, Israel as a sovereign autonomous state. And they said, beside, beside all these things, and now it's, it's the third day since these these awful happenings. And they said, and, and some of our women, some of the women in our group, female disciples, they amazed us this morning saying that they had been to Jesus' tomb and that they found it empty. And then that they had seen a, a vision of angels and the angels told them that Jesus was alive. And then so we were amazed. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it empty, just as the women had said. And yet no one had seen Jesus himself. And then Luke says that Jesus called these two disciples fools, foolish, and slow to believe. Indeed, notice verses 25 and 27. And Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary? Why are you so down in the mouth? Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And, and then Luke says, beginning with Moses and all the prophets. In fact, the old Hebrew Old Testament is broken up into three parts. The Torah, that's the book of Moses, the prophets, and the writings. And Luke says, and then beginning with Moses or the Torah and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them in all of the scriptures the things concerning himself. That is, Jesus began giving examples from scripture, uh, from, from beginning to end, starting with the Torah, the five books of Moses, and then on, on to the prophets, and probably, as is mentioned later in chapter 24, in the writings, the Psalms, and showing patterns uh, of which God's servants first suffer, and then, the, and then they're exalted. Probably uh, in, in the book of Genesis, Jesus would have mentioned Joseph. Joseph is such a type of Christ in his experience, speaking and being rejected and sold out by his brothers and, and being blessed in everything that he did and so on, but suffering all along the way. And then specific statements from, from the prophets, probably Isaiah's 53rd chapter and the Psalms, Psalm 22. Statements that are specific and related and traditionally understood to be relative to the uh, the Messiah and that uh, he must first suffer and then he would be glorified. And Jesus's point is that. And so why wouldn't this have happened to Jesus himself? And why are you surprised that this has happened to him? He must suffer first before he's glorified. And it's in the scriptures. And this is Luke's point. It's in the scriptures that Jesus is found and known because it's in the scriptures that Jesus is revealed for who he is. Indeed, Jesus himself used the scriptures to reveal himself to his disciples. 
In another place, John chapter 5 and verse 39, Jesus speaking to his enemies, the members of the religious establishment, he said, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is the scriptures that bear witness about me. And so if we would find Jesus, and if we would know Jesus, we must read and know the scriptures. Because Jesus Christ makes himself known to us in the scriptures. And then secondly and finally, Christ makes himself known to us in the breaking of the bread, in the scriptures, and then in the breaking of the bread. Indeed, Luke tells us in our text that uh, as Jesus and these two disciples drew to a mass, uh, Jesus acted as if he was just going to continue on. They were going to turn off and go to a mass, and Jesus pretended as if he would just continue on. But they urged Jesus to come and stay uh, with them. Truth be told, they wanted to hear more. They wanted to spend more time with Jesus and hear more of his teaching of the scriptures. Um, and so they said, well, why don't you come and stay with us and you can pick up your journey uh, tomorrow? Because after all, and they made an argument. They said, look, the day is far spent and evening is fast approaching. And so Jesus accepted their invitation. And then Luke says that uh, when Jesus was at table in their house, he did a very curious thing. Jesus was a guest in their house, but when he got to the table and the food was placed on the table, he immediately assumed the, the, the role of the host. And Luke tells us that he, he took the bread and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And he broke it. And he gave it to them. And in fact, uh, perhaps uh, you might remember that this was not the first time Jesus did this at table with his disciples. In fact, in Luke chapter 22, in verse 19, we read, And Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so uh, Jesus says, do this. <laughs> That's why we do that. <laughs> we do exactly every Sunday. We do exactly what he did and what he did again in Emmaus with these disciples. We take the bread. We give thanks. We break it. And we give it to one another. In celebration of what we call Holy Communion, Holy Eucharist, the word Eucharisteo means thanksgiving. And Luke says that at that very moment when Jesus had broken the bread and had given it to them, then their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus. It's him. And then Luke says something very curious. He says, and, and he vanished from their sight. In fact, if you read the various different uh uh, resurrection accounts Jesus was always coming and going and yet he in, in, even in this uh, gospel of Luke when he was with them later he appeared and and he says touch me and and touch my hands and touch my side and see that it's I'm not a ghost it's me it's really me and then he said them um, and do you have something to eat and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and he and the scripture says and he took it and he ate it and then he vanished and so the properties of the resurrection body, which we're told by the Apostle Paul, we too shall, shall uh, share that when, when he comes again and we rise, we will take on, uh, we will lay aside our, our, our earthly fleshly bodies and take up uh, resurrection bodies like his own resurrection body. But when they, but when they, but when, 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 when Jesus took the bread and broke it, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were open and they recognized who it was and he vanished. And then they said something so extraordinary. After Jesus vanished, they said to each other, after I expect, they said, wow. They said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road and while he opened to us the scriptures? And so hearts that Jesus described as slow to believe became hearts on fire 
because of the revelation of Jesus that they experience in the scriptures. And so I wonder, how would you describe the spiritual condition of your heart this morning? Would you describe it as a heart on fire? Or would you describe it as a heart slow to believe? And I wonder if either of these conditions has something to do with your relationship to the scriptures and what you see or what you don't see on Sunday mornings when the bread is taken and blessed and broken and given to you in Holy Communion. One of my favorite colleagues is from the evening office the evening office of evening prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. And this is how the prayer goes. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts, set our hearts aflame and awaken hope that we may know you as you're revealed in scripture and in the breaking of bread. And so now that you know where to find him, the only question that remains is, do you want him, do you want to know him enough to go to the trouble of seeking him in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread? Knowing the living risen Jesus Christ. Let us pray. The, the principle of the harvest, Lord, is always true. A man sows what he reaps. A woman reaps what she sows. We can't go into the gym and, and watch other people exercise and suppose that we're going to get any healthier. We can't go into the church and watch other people engage in the exercise of their gifts or listen to them be excited about the scriptures or watch their lives be transformed and expect that ours are going to be transformed without us engaging it. We can't keep the sun at arm's length and expect that anything should change. You told us in your word that we're to love you with all our heart. There it is again, the heart. To love you with all of our heart, not part of our heart. To love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, strength. And our neighbors, ourselves. Things that we don't mind saying in church because we expect that that's what we're supposed to say in church. And that's what people say. But when we're a consumer, when we're just watching what's going on, we don't mind. We don't connect with it. But we lose so much, don't we, Lord? When we do like that. And when we play the part of the consumer and ask ourselves if we've been properly entertained. But when we go and we, we listen to the scripture, or when we have the bread placed in our hands and we sip from the cup and nothing happens and nothing is experienced because our eyes are holden. Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes. Life is short. <laughs> And it keeps on getting shorter as each day goes by. If any of us ever had the inclination to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, may it be today that we finally stop watching other people love you with all their heart, strength, mind, and, and soul, and start doing it ourselves, that we might be transformed and that we might know you as you revealed in Scripture and then the breaking of bread. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so now let us continue our worship and the recitation of our belief, our Trinitarian belief and the recitation of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through, all, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy church universal that we all may be one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the faithful departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And Heavenly Father, we continue in our prayers for the United States and for the nations of the world as we carry on best that we can in the midst of this present coronavirus crisis. We pray, Lord, and commend to you the souls of those who have died and for those who are sick. We pray, Lord, for the doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals who are ministering to those who are sick. We pray, Lord, for the millions in our country and all around the world who have lost their jobs. Indeed, Lord, we pray for a swift end to this pandemic and for the economic, because of the economic havoc that is causing. We pray, Lord, that you would give to our national and state and local leaders wisdom as they're making decisions about how best to move forward and that their decisions would be in the interests of the people and not for any other reason. We pray Lord for our brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted because of their faith in your son Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, not to forget that their life is a crisis every day. Help us not to take for granted the freedoms that we enjoy. And help us to remember, Lord, that there's, only, there's one body of Christ and that we, that we are one with them, spiritually united with Christ, and therefore spiritually united with them. We pray, Lord, to also for our brothers and sisters at the church, and uh, for those for whom they've asked us to pray, in some instances, uh, uh, family members that we may not know, but we know through them and pray for them. We pray, Lord, for John and for Elaine, for Christopher and Carrie and Susie. We pray for Johnny and Jacob, for Randy and Carolyn, for Andrew, David, Christy, Abby and Grace, for Tanya, for Al, for Bob and Kitty, for Damien, Priscilla, Megan, and Sergio, for Zach, 
for Ashley, for Andy, for Andrew, Lauren, and Emery, for Olivia, for Michael, for Harry and Debbie, special prayers, Lord, for Nick, and we pray, for Lord, for a successful surgery and a speedy recovery. And we pray, Lord, for Joju and for Eric and Tawson and their family, as we pray, Lord, also for Emily and for Sam. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Welcome to Holy Cross Church. We're glad you've chosen to worship with us today. I'm Carrie Richardson, Director of Children's Ministry, and I'd like to tell you about some of the many ways that we're continuing to stay connected during this time of social distancing. Despite being closed for the COVID-19 pandemic, Holy Cross Kids Preschool continues to keep a strong connection with our preschool families. Our teachers are taking turns going live for daily story time on the Parents of Holy Cross Kids Facebook group. The school's director, Jessica Nelson, has also shared quality online learning resources for our parents' use in keeping their preschoolers occupied during their time away from school. Holy Cross children and their families are continuing their track through the Bible in one year with Dig In at Home family lessons. This week, we'll explore the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Families will be reminded that God won't let us down, even in the scariest of situations. Moms and dads, you have the chance to affirm this truth for your kids at a time when life is especially topsy-turvy, so we hope you'll take advantage of this week's lesson. You can trust this material to engage family members of all ages in hands-on learning that opens up God's Word. Parents, if you can read, you can teach these lessons, so be sure to watch for new content in your email inbox every Saturday afternoon. Holy Cross Youth are meeting for an exciting and interactive Bible study on Zoom every Sunday at 9 a.m. This is a great opportunity for students to not only learn about God's Word and how it's relevant to their lives today, but also to express how they're feeling or what they're going through in an environment where they won't be looked down upon. Parents, if your middle or high school age student would like to participate, please email our Director of Youth Ministry, Adam Gully, at adam at holycrosschurch.com. That's adam at holycrosschurch.com. Holy Cross Women will be meeting via Zoom again this Thursday, April 30th at 7.30 p.m. Meetings run 45 minutes, giving women the opportunity to check in with each other and discuss the devotional shared on email at the beginning of the week. Prompts and weekly emails include a variety of short videos, Bible passages, devotions, and more. All women are invited and encouraged to participate. Holy Cross men 
will continue connecting with one another at their next Zoom meeting this Saturday, May 2nd, from 8 to 9 a.m. These meetings provide a way to share how you're doing and do group Bible study. The men will continue their meetings online via Zoom until the local stay-at-home order is lifted. Holy Cross wants to help you stay spiritually strong in the midst of all you're facing. If you would like to receive information on any of the opportunities you've heard about today, be sure to note your interest on the electronic connection card found on our Facebook page, in the YouTube description box, or on our website, holycrosschurch.com. We look forward to hearing from you and to having you with us. It all I do
And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. And so go in peace, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, let each one of us seek to be a benefit and a blessing to everyone we meet, as we seek also to be ever-growing in love in our relationship with God, in our relationship with one another, and in our relationship with the world around us. Alleluia, alleluia.